I welcome you all for uh, module 8 lecture 2, a series of lecture on uh, metrology. In the last uh, lecture 1, we discussed about uh, different kinds of uh, instruments used for measurement of uh, taper. We discussed uh, about uh, bevel uh, protractors, sign bar, sign center and uh, sign table. In this uh, lecture number 2, we will continue with the discussion on uh, the other instruments used for measurement of uh, uh, taper, angle and tilt. In this lecture, we will be covering uh, the following uh, topics. Uh, external uh, taper measurement by using uh, two balls of uh, same diameter. Then we will discuss about uh, internal taper measurement by using uh, two balls of different uh, diameters and then we will learn about uh, the clinometer, profile projector and auto collimator. Now, let us start the discussion on external taper measurement by using uh, two rollers of uh, same uh, diameter. In this uh, sketch, uh, in this photograph, you can uh, see the tapered uh, component this is the taper component, taper plug gauge. The taper angle of this is to be uh, determined. Uh, the arrangement uh, you can see here, we have kept uh, two slip gauges of same height. Over that, we have kept uh, two rollers of uh, same uh, diameter and then these uh, rollers are in contact with uh, the surface of uh, the taper uh, plug gauge. Then uh, over the rollers, we have to take uh, the measurement using uh, uh, appropriate instrument, for example, uh, vernier uh, caliper. So, the schematic uh, arrangement, schematic diagram will be like this. We have uh, the surface plate on which uh, we have to keep uh, the tapered uh, component and then uh, we have to keep slip gauge of equal height. Say this is uh, height uh, H1 over which we have to keep the rollers, two rollers of uh, same diameter. The rollers should contact uh, the tapered uh, component and then we have to take the measurement over roller. So, this is uh, say M1. And then we have to change the height and again we have to keep uh, two slip gauges of uh, different height H2 and then over these uh, slip gauges again we have to keep the rollers. These two rollers should be in contact with uh, the taper component and uh, over roller we have to take the width M2 using uh, one year caliper or any other uh, appropriate uh, instrument. Then using uh, the relationships, we can uh, find uh, the angle theta. Now, uh, we will conduct uh, an experiment on uh, taper uh, measurement, external taper measurement by rollers, uh, by using rollers of uh, same uh, diameter. Okay, now, we can see the tapered uh, component.
the taper angle of this component is to be determined. Now, we have to take uh, two rollers of uh, same uh, diameter, we should note down what is the diameter of the roller. So, in this case you can see the diameter of roller is 10 millimeter. So, we have two rollers of same diameter. Now, we have uh, a slip gauge of uh, 30 millimeter height. So, we are taking two slip gauges of 20 millimeter and 10 millimeter uh, thickness. We have to ring them together to build a height of 30 millimeter. And then we have to keep the two uh, slip gauges. Over the slip gauges, we have to place the two rollers such that they contact uh, the tapered surface of the plug gauge. Now, we have to take the measurement over rollers. So, this is uh, M1. I can see the reading is uh, 60 62 millimeters. Reading is 62 millimeters. Now, we have to take uh, another uh, set of slip gauges. Now, the, we are ringing uh, two slip gauges of 30 millimeter and uh, 20 millimeter thickness. So, total height is 50 millimeter. So, another slip gauge of 50 millimeter height. Now, we have to keep the two rollers on the slip gauges of 550 millimeter. And over the rollers, we have to take the measurement, measurement over rollers. So, now the reading is 65 Five sixty six sixty seven sixty seven, and then we have to see the coinciding division. So the one year reading is sixty seven point eight millimeter. So now uh, we have recorded uh, the observations. The roller. Uh, diameter is uh, 10 millimeter and difference in height of slip gauges is equal to 50 minus 30 is equal to 20 millimeter and width over uh, rollers at a height of 55 millimeter. So, 50 millimeter is the height of slip gauge plus uh, 5 millimeter is the roller dia. So, total height is 55 uh, millimeter. So, at a height of 55 millimeter the measurement over roller is 67.8 millimeter. Similarly, width over rollers at a height of 30 millimeter, 30 plus 5 millimeter, 35 millimeter height is 62 millimeters. So, the taper angle is 16.5 degrees, that is 16 degree and 30 minutes is the taper angle of the component. Now, 
we will uh, learn uh, internal taper measurement by two balls of different diameters and uh, by using a depth uh, micrometer. We can see the photograph here, this is the uh, tapered uh, component having uh, internal uh, taper and then we are using uh, a depth uh, micrometer and then we have to use uh, two balls of uh, different uh, diameters. Now, the schematic uh, schematically we can show like this, this is the surface plate and this is uh, the taper component. Now, uh, we have to keep uh, a ball. of some uh, diameter, we have to note down what is the diameter of the ball and then using a depth micrometer, we have to measure what is the depth. So, so we have to note down what is the reading. The spindle of the depth micrometer should uh, just touch uh, the top uh, point on the ball and then we have to note down the reading. So, we have to note down this uh, reading say H 1. And then we have to remove this uh, ball and then we have to insert another ball of uh, bigger diameter. And then again we have to take the measurement, say this is H 2 from this uh, top surface, reference surface. So, this will be H uh, 2 and then by in knowing the diameters of uh, two balls and these uh, uh, values H 1 and H 2, we can uh, calculate the taper of uh, taper angle of this uh, component. Now, we will conduct an experiment uh, to learn the measurement of uh, in measurement of internal taper of a component. Now, you can see the arrangement measurement arrangement. We have two balls of different uh, diameters and we have uh, a tapered uh, component, internal tapered component and then uh, we have uh, a depth micrometer with uh, different uh, spindles of different size and then we have a, a vernier caliper for measurement of uh, diameter of balls. Now, I am measuring uh, the diameter of balls. You can see the diameter is uh, 25 millimeter and then we have to see the coinciding uh, division. The diameter of second ball You can see the tapered uh, component, we have uh, the internal uh, taper I am measuring uh, the total height of the component. So, it is uh, 79 millimeter on the main scale and then we have to see the coinciding division uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 25th division is coinciding. So, 25 into 0 0.02 that is 0 0.5. 
that is uh, diame the total uh, height of the component is 79.5 millimeter. Now, we have to keep the ball in the internal tapered component and then we have to measure the height of the topmost point from this reference surface and then we have to record what is the reading. You can see the spindle is just touching the top point on the ball. Then we have to note down the reading. It is uh, yeah. Now we have removed the bigger ball and now uh, I am keeping the smaller ball into the hole, tapered hole. And then again uh, we have to measure the depth. I am changing the spindle and I am putting uh, the spindle of uh, longer uh, length. Now, we can see I have inserted uh, the spindle of longer length into the micrometer. Now, I am measuring measuring the depth, we have to note down what is the reading. Now, uh, these are the observations after conducting uh, the experiment. The diameter of smaller ball is 25.4 uh, millimeter. So, the radius of the smaller ball small r is 12.7 uh, millimeter. Diameter of the bigger ball is 31.7 millimeter. So, the radius of the bigger uh, ball is 15.85 millimeter. Depth with the bigger ball is equal to 9.05 uh, millimeter. Depth with the smaller ball is equal to 51 millimeter. So, height of the component is 79.3 uh, millimeter. So, now we can calculate the taper angle using uh, these, uh, this relationship. So, we get a taper angle of 4.65 degrees. Now, let us uh, move to another instrument known as uh, clinometer, it is also called inclinometer which uh, measures the surface uh, tilt. The uh, arrangement of uh, the instrument is like this, we have a base, uh, precisely finished uh, brace, uh, base and then we have a micrometer. So, when we operate this micrometer, uh, a screw inside there is a screw, when we operate this micrometer, this uh, uh, spirit uh, level, the, the round uh, part containing this uh, spirit level will uh, rotate and then uh, this uh, circular scale which is housed inside the body will uh, directly give what is the tilt of uh, the surface. Initially, we have to keep this uh, uh, instrument on uh, a leveled uh, surface that is surface plate and we have to keep the inclinometer like this 
and then we should uh, check the whether spirit level is uh, reading ze 0 or not, whether the scale is reading 0 or not and then we have to keep this instrument on the surface which is uh, inclined like this and then we have to operate the micrometer till uh, the uh, spirit level again uh, reads uh, 0. So, this uh, circular uh, scale will uh, directly give what is the tilt of the surface. Now, we can see the commercially available uh, single axis electronic uh, inclinometer. Uh, this is the base, this base should be placed on uh, the surface whose uh, tilt is to be uh, measured. So, this uh, electronic inclinometer will directly give uh, what is the tilt uh, angle. This is another uh, instrument uh, with uh, a better uh, accuracy. These uh, electronic uh, inclinometers uh, accuracy can typically range from uh, 0 0.01 degree to plus or minus 2 degrees depending upon the sensor uh, that is used. Two axis inclinometers uh, that are built with MEMS tilt sensors provide simultaneous two dimensional tilt angle uh, readings of the surface. So, these uh, uh, two axis inclinometers they eliminate uh, tedious uh, trial and error uh, experienced when using single axis levels to adjust uh, machine footings to attain a precise uh, leveling position. Two axis inclinometers can be digitally compensated and uh, precisely calibrated for non-linearity for operating temperature variation resulting in higher angular accuracy over uh, wider angular measurement uh, range. These uh, two axis inclinometer with built in accelerometer sensors generates uh, numerical data tabulated in the form of vibration profiles. It enables uh, machine installer to track and assess alignment quality in real time and verify structure positional stability by comparing machines leveling profiles before and after setting up. Now, what are the specific functions of uh, uh, these inclinometers? They measure the slope angle during uh, distance uh, measurement and uh, measuring the height of a building, tree or other feature using a vertical uh, angle and a distance determined by taping or pacing using trigonometry. Uh, they alert an equipment operator that uh, it may tip over. So, this uh, uh, photograph shows uh, a two axis uh, inclinometer. Now, let us move uh, to another uh, very important uh, uh, instrument used uh, for measurement of uh, angles that is uh, profile uh, projector. Uh, this uh, profile projector, optical profile projector, it is a versatile instrument widely used in uh, many phases of uh, quality control. Uh, it has made possible the effective measurement of great numbers of components uh, which uh, because of uh, size or dimensional characteristic pose uh, serious difficulties to other uh, measurement me methods. For example, if the uh, work piece is very fragile, uh, it is uh, very thin uh, and other uh, instruments uh, are, uh, it is not possible to use other uh, types of instruments for measurement of uh, such a fragile or thin uh, uh, component. In such cases, this profile projector will be very, very useful. So, these are also known as uh, contour projectors optical comparators, shadow graphs, micro projectors etcetera. They display magnified images on a viewing screen. This is very important. They, they display magnified images on a viewing uh, screen. That means, we can always uh, select what is the magnification that is desired whether it is uh, 10x or 20x or 50x or 100x. So, depending upon the magnification that is needed, we can amplify the image and then we can uh, make the measurement and then we can find uh, the dimensions, form and physical characteristic of uh, the parts that also can be checked. They possess a special capability of displaying 2D projection. 
see other instruments like micrometer or vernier, they measure only one uh, uh, dimension at a time. And these uh, profile projector at a time they can uh, display 2 D uh, projection uh, rather than uh, a single dimension as with uh, most other uh, gauging devices. Now, what are the essential features of uh, these profile uh, projectors? You can see a schematic diagram of a uh, profile uh, uh, projector, you can see the various uh, optical elements like lenses, uh, light sources, uh, mirrors for deflecting the uh, light, collimating lenses to have a parallel beam of uh, light. Uh, the light sources normally they are made out of uh, tungsten uh, filament and we have the collimating lens uh, system to get a parallel beam of uh, light. So, workpiece table, this is very important, workpiece that can be placed on the table. You can see the uh, work uh, table here. Normally, these uh, work uh, stages or work tables, they have a, a glass uh, plate on which we have to keep the work piece. So, light will pass through the glass plate and uh, they will pass through the work piece and then we get uh, the projected uh, image, amplified uh, image. You can see we have a, a lens system and then we have mirror and then we have another mirror and finally, we get the a magnified view of uh, the uh, shadow of the component on the screen. Now, so the, uh, well these uh, tables in some cases they are stationary, in some models uh, they are movable, we can move uh, in the x direction or y direction that is uh, we can move the uh, table parallel to the column or perpendicular to the column, sometimes they can be rotated. So, this uh, rotatable uh, table is very, very useful when we use uh, the optical uh, projector for measurement of uh, angles, for example, screw thread uh, measurement. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the work pieces, the tables can be moved up and down uh, for uh, proper uh, focusing. And then we have projection uh, optical system and then we have a, a weaving screen which is made out of glass on which we get uh, the amplified image. Uh, different magnifications are uh, possible. So, commercially 10 uh, x, 20 x, 50 x, 100 x uh, magnifying lenses are available and with a special request even 500 x and 1000 x uh, magnifying lenses uh, are also available and screen sensor to load data points. So, we can always mount uh, a screen uh, sensor on the screen, so a sensor can be mounted here. So, which will sense the data points and then it, it could be uh, fed to the uh, microprocessor unit for uh, uh, processing of the data. And then we have light beam uh, system, horizontal lighting system, vertical uh, lighting system and surface illumination. So, this surface illumination will be very useful to study the surface characteristic of uh, the work pieces. And then we have uh, a fixture called helix angle uh, rotation for thread uh, measurement. So, we have we can uh, rotate the thread, so that the uh, thread becomes uh, parallel to the light beam and then we can take the measurement. And then there are uh, measuring uh, devices uh, incorporated into the uh, profile uh, projector like rotary scale with uh, vernier and x y micrometers for measurement of uh, movement of uh, the table and then digital uh, indicators to indicate what is the movement of the table and then uh, data process also incorporated to process the data. Now, you can see here helix angle uh, rotation uh, facility. So, this is the light ray. So, and this is the helix uh, angle. So, now because this is helix angle projection normal to the screw thread axis, projection is normal to the screw thread axis. In this case, there will be interference and we do not get uh, a proper uh, clear uh, image. So, what we have to do is we have to rotate the screw thread uh, by helix angle, uh, so that uh, light rays will uh, uh, move uh, parallel to the uh, helix uh, uh, the threads, so that we get a very clear uh, picture. Now, you can see the photograph of uh, a profile uh, projector, this is uh, the viewing uh, screen. We can also see the uh, 
rotary scales, protractor rings are uh, provided on the uh, viewing screen and then there is a vernier uh, attached uh, to the screen and then we have a magnifying uh, lens. There is a turret here, uh, on this turret we can uh, mount uh, 3 magnifying uh, uh, lenses at a time that is uh, 10x, 20x, 50x like that we can uh, the magnifiers can be fixed. Uh, manually we can rotate this uh, turret and we can select the appropriate uh, uh, magnifying uh, lens and this is the uh, work stage or work table. You can see 2 micrometers are attached. So, this is uh, 1 micrometer, this is another micrometer. By operating these wheels, the table can be moved uh, perpendicular to the column or parallel to the column and we can see there is a uh, helix angle uh, rotation uh, fixture is there and uh, two centers are there. Uh, using these two centers, we can mount the thread, screw thread and then uh, we can rotate through helix angle to get a clear image on the screen. And then we have this is the main uh, switch and uh, we have two types of illuminations. One is uh, surface illumination and one other one is uh, throw illumination. Uh, the surface illumination, uh, by using this uh, uh, surface illumination, we can study the surface characteristic of the workpiece and by using throw illumination, the light rays will pass through the workpiece and we get uh, the contour uh, image on the uh, screen, viewing uh, screen. The, and then by using uh, the reference cross lines, by moving the cross uh, lines on the screen, we can make the measurements. And this is the data processor unit, you can see the enlarged view, uh, various uh, uh, functional uh, keys are there. By selecting appropriate uh, key, uh, we can uh, make uh, the measurement. For example, if you want to measure uh, the diameter of a round uh, part, we have to keep the round part on the uh, glass uh, plate and then we should get uh, the contour on the screen and then we have to move uh, uh, the uh, cross uh, uh, lines, reference lines and then we can take the measurement. So, in when we want to measure the diameter of uh, a work piece, so we have to select uh, 3 points on the contour. So, this image will be there on this uh, screen the shadow will be there on the screen, we have to select uh, one point, we have to select, select another point and then we have to select a uh, third point. So, like that we have to select, uh, where we should input uh, three uh, points and then uh, uh, after uh, loading all the three points, it, the data processor will process and finally, it will uh, give what is the diameter of the uh, work piece. So, there are uh, different uh, techniques by which we can make the measurement using uh, uh, profile uh, projectors. Uh, the, that is measurement by movement that is using cross lines uh, on the screen. We can move the cross lines and then for example, say we want to measure the diameter of a work, work piece and this uh, contour is obtained on the viewing screen. Now, we have this uh, uh, cross line. So, we should uh, move the cross line so that it just touches uh, one uh, point on the periphery, say this is uh, reading is 0 and then we should move it and then we should make it uh, to touch the other uh, point and then we should note down what is the reading, say 10. So, the diameter is 10 millimeter. So, like this by moving, by moving the cross uh, lines, we can uh, make the measurement. Also by rotating the cross lines, we can make the measurement. Say we have a thread profile on the screen like this and we want to measure what is the thread angle. So, one uh, uh, cross lines, uh, we should make it to align with uh, this particular flank. Say the reading is 0 degree and then we should uh, uh, rotate uh, the cross lines so that it uh, aligns with another uh, flank, say this is uh, uh, reading is 60 degree. So, this uh, thread angle is uh, three, uh, 60 degree. So, like this by movement uh, we can uh, make the measurement 
Uh, similarly, we can me measure the depth, say we have a st step here, we want to know, we want to measure what is the uh, depth. So, the cross line should uh, be aligned with this, well, say the reading is 0 and then you should move uh, down and then we should make it to align with this particular uh, surface, say the uh, reading is 10, this is not degree this is 0 mm and this is uh, 10 mm. So, the uh, depth is uh, 10 millimeter. Like this uh, by move measurement uh, by movement, we can uh, make the measurement. So, another uh, technique is measurement by comparison. That means, on the screen, we have, we have to paste uh, a chart, which is known as a chart gauge. So, say if, uh, for example, if we want to measure the uh, screw thread, so, we have to uh, mount the chart gauge of appropriate magnification with two contour lines. So, one for the maximum size and another for this is the tolerance band and then we have to get the uh, shadow of uh, the thread which is to be inspected. Now, it falls if it falls uh, like this between the two contour lines then the workpiece is uh, accepted. If the image falls outside, then it is not uh, accepted. Like this, uh, by comparison, we can make the measurement. And other uh, technique is measurement by translation using tracer, follower and uh, pantograph. That means, uh, there will be a pantograph uh, uh, mechanism and then we have to keep the uh, work piece with the profile on the table and there will be a tracer, a ball uh, tracer which will trace the surface of the work piece. And on the other side of the pantograph, there is a follower. So, follower will be moving. Now, this follower is uh, uh, projected onto the viewing uh, screen. So, the projected image of the follower will be like this and again there will be a chart with uh, two contour uh, lines, one maximum size and one minimum, uh, minimum size like that. So, when we move the tracer onto the work piece, the follower will also be moving. If the image of the follower moves within these two limits, uh, then the work piece is uh, accepted. So, this is uh, measurement by translation. Now, we will uh, uh, see a profile uh, projector. Now, you can see a profile uh, projector. This is the viewing uh, screen with protractor ring. Now, this is uh, the magnifying uh, lens 20 x and then uh, Yeah, we can see another uh, magnifying uh, lens of 10 x and you can see the, uh, the light source for surface illumination purpose. We have to keep the work piece on this uh, glass uh, table, glass plate. This is the table, work table and this is the glass plate on which we have to keep the work piece. Uh, we have to we want to study the surface characteristic and then we, we should use surface uh, illumination uh, that means light will fall, uh, uh, move like this and here it uh, it will uh, be tilted and then again it gets uh, reflected and then the image we get on the viewing uh, screen this is the turret uh, in this uh, turret we can mount uh, three magnifying uh, lens so this turret can be manually rotated uh, to bring uh, the magnifying lens of appropriate uh, magnification uh, in line with the work piece. Yeah. Now, we can see a fixture. This is a fixture to mount uh, the screw thread. Uh, we have uh, the two centers. Uh, these centers can be moved in and out, uh, the clamps are provided to fix the 
centers at the desired uh, location. And then you can see uh, there is a pivot here, this is the pivot, we can tilt uh, the screw thread uh, by helix angle, so that we get a clear image and that angle also we can uh, see here, what is the helix angle rotation we can see by using uh, this scale. Yeah, now, you can see the helix angle uh, rotation uh, facility. Yeah, this is the reference, well, on one side we have up to 10 degrees and on the other side we have another uh, 10 degrees. Yeah, now, you can see the projected image of uh, the screw thread and you can also see the protractor ring here, this is the 0 and uh, in the anti clockwise direction it is 5 degree, 10 degree, 15, 20, 30, 40, it goes up to 350, 355, 360, complete 360 degree uh, rotation uh, it can uh, measure and then we have a vernier. So, each degree is divided into 60 parts. So, the least count of this uh, arrangement is uh, 1 uh, minute. So, 1 degree is divided into 60 parts, so least count is 1 minute. Now, you can see this is the main switch and this is the switch uh, to, for, to activate the surface uh, elimination. And then this, uh, by operating this switch, we can have uh, the vertical uh, uh, elimination system to get uh, the shadow of the work piece. And again, we can select high intensity light or low intensity light depending upon the requirement. Yeah, now, this is the pivot of uh, the uh, helix angle rotation arrangement and this is the work piece. You can see the light, it is uh, passing through the work piece. Yeah, you can clearly see the screw thread and this is the glass plate. Twenty X magnifier. Now you can see the data processor, microprocessor attachment. We have to load the data points into this microprocessor, and then by selecting appropriate uh, uh, keys, we can. Uh, uh, get uh, the radius, diameter, angle, major diameter, minor diameter, etcetera, etcetera. You can see the various uh, function keys here. Uh, to find uh, the included angle, we can select this k and uh, to get the diameter of a component, we have to select uh, o and to find uh, the radius, uh, we have to select uh, l like this uh, and then uh, what is the, if we want to find the distance between a point uh, from a line which is passing through 2 points 2, 3, then we have to select this uh, key j. Now, if you select this L, so five uh, measurement points are uh, required.
Now, you can see the display unit. So, this is uh, x micrometer and y micrometer. Now, they are set to 0. So, by operating the micrometers, so when we want to measure the pitch, so we should move the vertical cross line and then we can measure the pitch. So, we have to make the vertical cross line to pass through this point and then we should note down what is the reading and then we should move the vertical cross line to this particular point and then again we should note down what is the reading the distance gives the pitch. So, like this we can make the measurement. And finally, the data processor will process and it will give what is the, now you can see the, we have measured the thread angle, it is 56 degree 54 minutes. Now, we can see thread angle measurement using uh, data processor, we should select appropriate uh, processing function uh, keys. Uh, thread angle measurement, uh, it is uh, like this, say we have uh, we have a profile like this. So, we should make, uh, we should load totally 4 point, 4 points are uh, needed. We have to select uh, the k uh, key and then we have to input uh, 4 points. So, first point, second point, third point, 4 points we have to select on the flanks and then we have to input these 4 points and uh, the data processor will uh, process. Uh, these uh, four data points and finally, it will indicate, it will print what is the intersection angle. So, similarly, in order to find the diameter of uh, a component, we have to uh, feed three data points. So, first uh, data point, second data point and third data point. Like this, we should give three points. So, in that case, we should select the key O. Similarly, uh, we can find uh, the distance of point 1 from a straight line passing through 2 points. Uh, say this is uh, 2 and say this is uh, 3. So, now what is the distance between point and this uh, straight line passing through these 2 points? So, that we can uh, uh, find by selecting uh, appropriate uh, key. Now, you can see here thread angle measurement using uh, circular scale and uh, vernier. So, we have uh, circular uh, uh, scale here, this is circular scale, pro or we say protractor ring and this is the vernier, vernier uh, scale. Now, one cross line should uh, align with one flank and then we, what is the reading we should take and then uh, we should rotate uh, the cross line, we should make it uh, parallel to the other flank and then again we should take uh, the reading. The difference will give uh, the thread angle. So, now uh, we will conduct uh, an experiment to show how to use profile projector to measure uh, thread angle. I can see the protractor ring, it is showing 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree etcetera and then this is the vernier. So, the least count is uh, 1 minute. Now, the reading is 
uh, when the cross uh, line is uh, parallel to one uh, flank, the reading is 31, 32, 33 degrees and coinciding division is 25, 33 degrees, 25 minutes. Now, you can see uh, I am rotating uh, the screen, so that uh, the cross line becomes parallel to another uh, flank. Yeah, now, it is uh, parallel to the other flank and then again we have to note down what is the reading. Now, you can see uh, the reading is 331, 332 degrees and uh, 21 minutes, 332 degrees, 21 minutes. This is the reading. The difference uh, we should uh, take to get the thread angle. Now, you can see the observations. Uh, first reading is 30 de 33 degree 25 minutes and second reading is 332 degrees 20 minutes. So, this uh, we have to deduct uh, from 360 degrees. So, 360 degrees minus 332 degrees 20 minutes is equal to 27 degrees 40 minutes. So, the thread angle is we have to add uh, this 27 degree 40 minute with uh, 33 degree 25 minutes. So, the thread angle is 61 degrees uh, 5 minutes. So, like this we can use profile projector for measurement of uh, thread angle. Let us see what are the cost advantages of uh, using uh, profile uh, projector. See, if the components are very fragile, very thin, then other uh, uh, measuring instruments cannot be used. So, this is uh, the only option and if the complex uh, uh, workpiece uh, geometry is very, very complex, then uh, multiple settings are uh, required if you use uh, the other types of uh, instruments like uh, micrometer or vernier caliper. Whereas, in this uh, profile projector, in a single setting we can uh, measure uh, the multiple uh, dimensions, uh, 2D measurement is also possible. And in conventional instruments and uh, gauges, uh, there is a problem of uh, wear, frequently we have to check the gauges and we have to replace the gauges. Uh, whereas, uh, in the case of uh, optical gazing, uh, there is no uh, wear of uh, light beam. So, the optical gauge is not subjected to wear. So, the frequent checking and frequency, uh, frequent uh, replacement uh, problem will not be there. When the design uh, of the workpiece uh, changes, fixed gauges uh, should be uh, change new set of gauges uh, should be purchased. In the case of optical gauge, we need not have to purchase the new, uh, uh, new profile, pro same profile projector can be used uh, even when uh, the design of the workpiece uh, changes. Only thing is uh, uh, chart gauges uh, we may have to change. Like this, uh, the profile projector offers uh, many cost uh, advantages. So, with this uh, uh, let us conclude uh, this uh, mod eight, module uh, 8 uh, lecture 2. In this uh, lecture, we discussed uh, about uh, the various instruments used for uh, measurement of uh, angle like uh, clinometer and then we also discussed about uh, profile projector, what are the various uh, measurement techniques of uh, profile projector and what are the uh, cost advantages of profile projector, those things uh, we discussed. Uh, we will uh, conclude uh, this lecture. In the next class, we will uh, continue the discussion. Thank you.